Hello, good morning on this Sunday morning. Uh, for this video, I'm going to be doing a, a, a bit of a short video really on the, the consistency elements of you know creating videos because to you know be noticed by the YouTube algorithm and to actually get more and more traffic to your YouTube channel you basically need some consistency with making the videos now that is all easier said than done to some extent because anyone who makes videos for YouTube will tell you pretty much the same thing but you know initially when they first start doing it there's like a lot of excitement you know they're going to get lots of followers go traveling etc 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 but then they realize that it's actually quite uh, uh not quite very you know, very difficult to actually get the, the subscribers to follow us you know um i mean you know like on my channel at the moment i've got 102 subscribers which doesn't sound great but then again if you look at some other limited companies you know i'm not going to name them name them and shame them but if you look at some limited companies they've barely got five or six three four five six i mean you know it's one company uh that i know of you know they've got six subscribers have been going 27 years so you know you know that's that's a that's a failure um look you, you know ultimately to um make videos um and, and it's all about consistency you, you know and you know it is hard work um you know all youtubers will tell you that um you know there's, there's this kind of fatigue if you like um you know that kicks in after a while because you know everyone's got their, their private lives their social lives their working lives you know maybe spending time with their friends their partners what family whatever it is uh, or, or just you know <laughs> everyone's got their own private time so you know it's actually quite hard work to make a video you can you you know you got to research what you're going to do you got to film it um and then you got to edit it and then you got to um you know write the description find the keywords upload it find a thumbnail or create a thumbnail let's say you know so the whole process can easily take you um depending on the size of a video and the type of video but you know seriously even for a video like this the whole process end-to-end -end process you're probably looking at sort of three four three four five hours you know, by the time you filmed it, edited it, created a thumbnail, written a description, found the keywords, uploaded it. So it's not it's not a twenty minute job, guys. You know that's what I'm saying. And um, for that reason, a lot of people do feel fatigued by it. Um, and you know, the danger is you can just kind of slack off and maybe do a video once every six weeks or once every five weeks, which I don't think is quite enough. Um, you know, now you know I'll, I'll hold my hands up. You know. I haven't been doing it as frequently as I should. But I'm going to try and change that. Um, but you know, if you can try and aim to do it once a, a some kind of video once a week, you know, maybe maybe once a fortnight, once a week, something something like that. Then you know, when YouTube sees that consistency, you're uploading those videos. You know, it will really help you in the long term. Yeah, some of the things which like YouTube really takes notice of is when somebody clicks not interested on you know go on, on a video you know it'll give you the option do you want to watch it in the suggested panel and if you click not interested it will definitely clock that it also clocks things like the click through rate so that's when people see the thumbnail and will they decide to then click on it and watch the video or just skip by um, it measures things like watch time so you know that can be com combined watch time over a period of you know a month 48 hours or whatever but it, it definitely does take into account these things i mean normally how many video how many videos like a um a, a, you know a user has watched from your channel so obviously on my channel i've got other videos so the assist the youtube algorithm takes note of you know which other videos are you watching or you know on my, let's say my channel or somebody else's channel or if you're just watching one and then disappearing into the middle of the night so it takes that into account as well also looks at you know what a user has searched for and what they've searched for in the past the demographic information and all that kind of stuff um, the first three of those you can influence yourself so that's like the click through rate the watch time and um yeah and how many vis how many videos a user has watched from your channel so you've got a little bit of control over those now you know there's, there's different ways to get traffic to you know youtube channel some people do these like live feeds now you know admittedly that does depend on the type of channel and the type of niche that you're doing so you know for example i do like you know marketing straight ai 
tech videos with some travel content and you know maybe or maybe not that might not work so well not not because of me because of a, 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 a niche but if you're doing like um you know if you've got a youtube channel which is more a kind of like a social channel you, you know like a good example about it's like and ndt i think it's ndtvi thailand or something like that there's a guy called nick nick dean and he owns a few bars and you know they have like a dj booth and you know a couple of guest speakers and you know they, they, they do like live live streams uh, I think most days you know and it's, it's very popular and that really kind of draws people in because you, you know they, they feel drawn into almost like a radio show you know so that's that's great for that kind of environment for something like like a, like a marketing video mm, not sure um, you know so People do do these live streams. You know, I've seen some girls doing it as well. You know, um, you know, maybe they're like uh, travel vloggers, stroke models, and you know, they're they're doing these like live streams, and that works for them because, believe it or not, a lot of guys, <laughs> you know, you know, tune in because because you know they want to see like a hot girl on an amazing island in in the, in the Caribbean or Southeast Asia or whatever. But it doesn't work for everybody. Yeah, another way to kind of. Um, you know increase the traffic to your youtube channels for youtube shorts now again you know you got you need to make a decision if you run a youtube channel whether that is going to work for you um initially when i launched my channel i did try it um and you know i did get some subscribers from that um some disappeared some stayed um but then as i kind of got into youtube a bit more and i've been doing it for a year now you know i noticed you know some of the more bespoke creators you know who've got a lot of followers they've got their niche refined you know they've been exactly what they're doing you know i've noticed not recently but i've noticed you know maybe six months ago they weren't doing youtube shorts they were just doing like long form videos which are more difficult to put together because you've got to have the right bit of kit you've got to have the right editing software you've got to be good at video editing you've got to be good at creating narratives and stories and stringing all the pieces pieces together and doing the research with a youtube shorts they're like you know one minute clips and you can literally just get your mobile phone you know open it up and, you know <laughs> you know go like that so you know there is less skill involved in that however uh you know that can help to draw traffic to your channel I, I tend to find that in general it's a different audience that use youtube shorts you know it tends to be the younger generation uh i don't want to say anything negative but you know the younger generation um by that i mean 20 25 18 20 20 25 maybe up to 30. Um, i'm not saying people my age don't use mobiles of course they do but you know certainly for the more specialist niches uh you know people do uh like to see like a full length video so youtube shorts just something to bear in mind it can definitely help to bring traffic to your channel you just need to if you're going to do youtube shorts you know, just need to make sure it's on cue with your niche because the danger is, you know, you go filming stuff on your, on your mobile phone, it's totally irrelevant to your channel niche. So it might be a bit difficult. I mean, that's probably why I, have, I haven't done it because, you know, I do like sort of AI, SAS marketing videos and some travel content. So for me to do YouTube shorts, I don't see that's really viable, you know, uh, and that's why I made the decision sort of four or five months ago to scrap the YouTube shorts and just concentrate on the, the, the full length videos you know yeah another thing to remember is you know whatever your niche is you know whether it's like travel which is the most popular one um, or anything else you know it, it could be anything from DIY to um, yeah it's got to be something that you're knowledgeable about that you've got a passion and interest about and but you can impart some value you know because you know if you're just like going on holiday that's not really enough you know you need to be able to add some value and bring something to people which some you know valuable information which is going to help them you know in the course of what they're looking for or what they're planning to do that type of thing um but you know a lot of people flip-flop with these niches so you know it's, as i mentioned in previous videos it's not uncommon to find people I say people like youtubers who've got multiple interests so maybe they're like sort of skydiving traveling um you know uh, cycling like rate rate football you know and, and they're kind of flip-flopping between these niches and that's going to go against you so you know you gotta uh have a niche which is you know something you're really passionate about something you really enjoy something you're very knowledgeable knowledgeable about and also you know if you are doing two niches 
just make sure we're t tying together. So, you know, for example, if you're doing like traveling cruise or traveling aviation or something like that, um, you know, that would work quite well. As I mentioned, I do travel and marketing at the moment. Uh, I do get away with that to some extent because, you know, I'm from a marketing background. That's what I've been doing the last 10 years. And, you know, there's definitely some kind of crossover between, you know, the, the kind of AI, SWS solutions and, 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 you know, the travel industry and how it markets itself and stuff. So that's the kind of angle I'm kind of working towards, you know, rather than just filming people on the beach, you, you know, that doesn't work for me. I'm, I'm more interested in, you, you, you know, the actual um, marketing stroke technology aspects of you know how all these things tie in together so so I do get away with that to some extent but make sure your niches are um, you know relevant rather than just flip-flopping between totally different subjects and that, that will help you for sure okay and the last one which I have touched on previously in another video is you know optimize your content so when you write the descriptions find the keywords which are relevant to the type of video that you're making so for that you can use like TubeBuddy you can use vidIQ uh, YouTube itself suggests some keywords it doesn't tell you how great they are it just su suggests them doesn't necessarily tell you how awesome they are for that you need something like vidIQ or TubeBuddy and there's a free um, keyword tag extractor which you can find by googling it um, I forget my name of it but I did mention it if you look back in one of my previous videos within the YouTube um, section when I say YouTube section the videos about YouTube there's two or three of them is I've mentioned it in there um, and I've also mentioned it in one of the uh, 50 AI uh, videos as well so look, it's, it's not easy to it's, it's not difficult so to, to to find these keywords but it, t it will take you a little bit of time to find the right keywords and to find the ones which are most popular so by that I mean high search volume low competition those are the ones you're looking for ideally speaking you know if you if you're just going for um, you know a high search volume high competition words you know there's a lot more people looking for those or using those and you know perhaps they're not gonna have the desire, the effect that you want so so what you're looking for is like uh, you know high search volume low competition okay so ultimately guys just to wrap up because I want to keep this video quite short you know rather than getting banging on and on and on and on um, the, 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 key, the, key, the ultimate key to it is you know frequency consistency and frequency if you can you know everyone's got busy schedules you know you, you know it doesn't matter what we do for a job but you know everyone's busy with work life social life and stuff but if you can discipline yourself to make a video let's say once every two weeks guaranteed you know that will really help uh, over a sustained period of time that will really help you to get noticed by the YouTube algorithm you know what one a week's preferable appreciate not everyone's got that time because if you're working Monday to Friday 40 hours and then you're totally knackered on Saturday and then Sunday you're spending time with family Sunday lunch and mates down the pub <laughs> or whatever so, so look you know but if you can aim for a video once every two weeks uh, maybe three times a month or something like that that's a good starting point you know i'm not saying you've got to go to town and make a one hour video and do a lot of specialist research and, and get on a Qatar airways flight or, or ba flight or whatever it is you, you know because these things require more planning more resources often sponsors and stuff like that but if you can just you know f find the niche that you're comfortable with that you you know you are knowledgeable about and where you can um you know make these videos from home uh, ideally that's what that's what i do with these um you know they're a lot easier to make because well i'm not saying they're dead easy to make but they are easier to make because you, you haven't got to travel big distances you haven't got to you know confirm uh you know arrangements with third parties you can do the research uh, i've been working in the sector for 10 years you can record the videos from home as, as long as you've got some value and, and you're not just you know spouting off gibberish opinions that you know are, are, you know aren't really going to benefit people then then i think it's like a win-win situation so i'll wrap up there uh, thanks for watching and uh, i'll see you on the next one cheers